Monday, July 15th, 2013, sir, <coughs> the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now I have a roll call of the members. Ed Luttrell. Present. Jamie Bowman. Here. Don Brown. Here. Frank Myers. Here. Will Quinn. Here. Mickey Kidding. Here. Sharon Frank Roth. Here. Uh, Older woman Shauna Zerwick. Here. We have Great. On to approval of the agenda for tonight. Uh, is there a motion on the agenda? I move to approve the we agenda. We have a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second. Right matter second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Item four, approval of the minutes for the May 20th, 2013 meeting. Is there any discussion or a motion on those minutes? I do. Um, well, this is silly, but on the back side, um, I didn't know it just says Commissioner Yon. I didn't know if it was supposed to say ah. Commissioner Braun. So. And then this doesn't really have to do with this, but I just have a question. Um, like, since we are, you know, we plan on being here on the scheduled times anyway, like, even if we don't have something, can we meet then to discuss our stuff? You know, about, you know, so we don't have to meet at other times, like when I would have to work or whatever. But that you can be whatever you want to meet. You know, like, you know, for our things that we have. Closed session or something. Closed, closed session, session things. Yeah, yeah, yeah and we yeah. could just count those as our closed sessions. So you don't have yes. closed sessions. Well, what is that called then? The work session. Work, work session. Work, session. Mm -hmm. work closed, we're going to call it. I agree. I mean, because yeah. I plan to be here yeah. anyway, and then I'm just like, oh, okay. You know. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. I think we need to do it too, because we have a lot of questions. But everybody kind of has it. We kind of talk together, but if we bring them out, I'd like to schedule one. I've got a, a big problem with something that uh, we need to go over and decide which way we're going to head with it. It's not something I want to discuss. You know, I'd like a work session to discuss it so get everybody's opinion. So if we can schedule one tonight now while we have everybody here, maybe we could do that when it's time. To yeah, you can that. have work sessions. Anytime. Well, if you meet at 7, you could have a work session at 6. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have an official agenda. You just read me an hour before the meeting. Okay. And, uh, okay. Board of all the mm -hmm. That's fine. I just we had talked. We had scheduled it for the 17th, and then there was nothing mm -hmm. on the agenda. So I thought that might be an optimum time for us to get together, since most of us were playing. I think Ed was wanting to meet after the meeting today. If it's possible, or maybe we can. It's fine with me. Yeah, just a few minutes to. Well. It's still a public meeting. I mean, it's, called, it's called a work session. So just don't adjourn this meeting. And have that under other business to be heard. Okay. okay. So, well, no, no. I want it to be a work session where we... I hate our ignorance to show in front of... There's, there, well, we have to have a meeting with, that we can discuss things. Work without, sessions still require notice. Well, then let's don't call it a work session. Maybe we'll do it on email like we, we've been doing. That's not a work session. If everybody agrees with that, I can I can have something emailed to everybody and get their opinion back. And if we look, think we need to further it, then we'll have a work session. But at least everybody will have an idea where we're going. Yeah. So why don't I try that? I'll just, just email that. you all. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion on the minutes with, with the Correction. corrections? I first. Uh, Okay. Uh, motion to approve the meetings with, with pending the, the corrections on I'll Mr. Second. Braun. Is there a second? Mickey Kane seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The minutes are approved. Now we'll move on to the uh, regular commission business. First action item tonight <coughs> is uh, application number 13-0715A, a request to demolish a metal shed and silo located at the intersection of Riverview Drive and North Main Street. Is there someone here to speak on that tonight? Is this for Union Pacific Railroad? Yes. Yes, yes. uh huh. Yes. 
this to the recorder. Hey, my name is <coughs> Stanley Lewandowski. I'm with Spiritus Wrecking Company. The railroad asked me to come and represent them tonight. I, I really don't know what what to say. I, I would assume you'd ask me questions. Hopefully two days. When are you start? Uh, when I receive a demolition <laughs> permit, and that'll be, you know, yeah. if you make a motion to approve. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll second it. Uh, second. I'd like one, just one question. Sure. It's This is owned by Union Pacific. Union Pacific. That's interesting because when I call Union Pacific for the problem, they always tell me, well, no, it's Burlington Northern. Yeah. Now, is anybody sure who owns the Delcon thing? I have no objection to tearing it down, but. I don't know. Obviously, I mean, the money, I'm assuming. Union Pacific, it, our, my client is Union Pacific Railroad. Yeah. Now, I, it might be that Burlington Northern is some matter of subsidiary, but yeah. I don't know that. Yeah. Forty years ago, they used to unload fertilizer for the like, mm -hmm. Cody Supply and MFA. That's what it was used for. Okay. So we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Your nice. thank you. That yes. permit carried out. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item is <clears throat> item number thirteen dash oh seven one five B. A request to demolish a wooden outbuilding located in the Sylvanus parking lot at 40 Merchant Street. Is there someone here on that item? We have no one present. I don't know if that should hold us back from discussing this voting on it anyway or what we should do. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear cut on the application. I don't know if anyone. I don't have any questions. If nobody has any questions, I don't think we can vote on them. Yeah, I mean, I don't decide that we can't. So is there, is there a motion on this item? Well, the, the only thing is keeping the supplies, you know. Um, keeping the windows or whatever for future, or if anybody else. To donate them to? Yeah. So I guess somebody could get a hold of them. That's a suggestion, not a requirement. Right. Anyway, correct? Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Is there, is there a motion then on this one? Or? I'll make a motion to approve it. There a motion from Edler Trails or a second? I second. Uh, Shauna, Zerwig, uh, seconds? No, I'm not Shauna. Jamie. Jamie. Jamie, second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that motion carries. Move on to the third action item. It's action item number 13-0715C. A request to replace broken tile on the rear of the house located at 447 Merchant Street circa 1902 and to place black wooden shutters on the front windows, replace the front porch roof, and convert a rear second floor door into a window. Is there someone present for that? Come, come, on, come on up, have a seat. Hi, how are you doing? Thanks for being here. Go ahead and just identify yourself and tell us about your project here. I'm really nervous. <laughs> That's okay, we all are. So go ahead. My name is Phyllis Alkin. I own the house at 447 Merchant. Uh, three years ago, uh, my back porch was completely rotted and literally in the shape of a U. So for safety reasons, we tore it down because every time it rained, chunks of it was laying in my yard. Well, there's pieces of broken tile where the back porch was that need to be replaced. And um, I thought, well, at the time, um, since I'm repairing the, the tile, I'd paint it white and add black shutters to the front windows. And um, there was a list of repair work that needs to be, that my insurance company asked to have done. Um, so I think I gave you that list of the repair work. And this is my, the contractor, my friend Robert wow. Burleson and his, partner Keith, um, they were going to do the repair work for me. Um, we want to keep everything as close to the original as possible and um, we, we don't want it to look any different than a Victorian house. We just, we know we can't replace the original tiles because to the best of our knowledge they're asbestos. So he brought some samples of tiles that we were going to use if you approved it. They're made by GAF 
and they're made to the exact specifications of the old asbestos tile. They're just now ceramic based. Uh, is the old weatherboarding underneath the crack tile, is it I'm salvageable? Sorry. I didn't hear you. The weatherboarding under the crack tile. What is its shape? It's still serviceable because it's still got the, the old metal flashing that when needs to be removed. So that's protected it to this point. The tar paper is still mostly intact. Well, what, the reason I'm bringing it up, I mean, the ideal thing as far as preservation is concerned is get the asbestos shingles off. And if there's enough of the original siding, paint the siding and that portion oh, the, of the building then is done. No, the original siding is in really bad repair. That's why they went over it with the asbestos siding when they did. Well, because it would have everybody to be in town did to keep from painting, and it's a problem for everyone now. But uh, what you're suggesting is that this tile, which closely resembles asbestos tile, yes, be used in lieu of it. Yes. Can we see it? Yes, ma'am. So you're going to do the whole back wall, or you're just going to fill in the blanks? We're going to fill in the blanks with it. Are you going to try to replace the porch? Or Not at this time. I just don't have the money. Um, so what I was going to do for safety reasons was fill in with the doorway, fill it in, and just make a window there so that in the future when I or a future owner wants to replace the back porch, all they have to do is take out the the, the doorway and they can build the back porch again. This is on the second floor. Yeah, this is the second floor exit. Okay. Okay, I think we're going to break this into three pieces, right, everybody? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Three or four? Three or four. Yeah, four. Just in, in, in various pieces. So the first one is replacing the broken cement of asbestos tiles. Is there a motion on that? We would need a motion on that. So that's just repair. Yeah, that just would just be repair. Just repair? And I think maintenance. Routine, yeah. Oh, maintenance. Okay. Yeah. It's just maintenance. maintenance right? so. Good idea, guys. All yeah. right. Yeah, we also have a copy of the contract if you need it, my card. Okay, we had we had as item two uh, place the black decorative wooden window shutters on the front facade of the house. There aren't any shutters now. We were just going okay. to put it up to make it pretty. Okay. Were there shutters on the house originally? Mm -hmm. Uh, not to the, my knowledge, no. I mean, is there evidence of hinge marks or anything there? No, there's not. Then you're doing something that really shouldn't be done to a house, it's decoration rather than preservation. But we were as long as you don't damage the structure and the right. old window frames, I have no objection. Oh, there'll be no damage to those. We figured it would help blend the house with the others in the neighborhood, which do have shutters. <laughs> Make them all along. <laughs> yeah. No, but it is. I mean, I agree it's not you. good preservation <laughs> if there not, were not shutters on the house to add shutters. However, what I'm saying is you do no damage, really, other than appearance. No, there if, be you, no damage. if you don't go digging in deep to set your hinges in the light, if it's, if it's reversible, removable, I have no tips. Are these so, going to be functioning shutters? No, they're, no just gonna, decorative. Decorative. they're just going to be on the sides of the wooden. windows. No. Yes, they're wooden. Oh, they'll be wooden? Yes. Yes. Because wow. so I knew you, you required well, wooden. Well, we have a special vendor that deals wow. in nothing but wooden shutters, and they have hundreds of, wow. yes. Are you putting them just across the downstairs or on uh, the no, upstairs uh, also? Uh, across the upstairs, too. Okay. Will they be permanently fastened open? Yes. They're not operable. No, no. not operable. Is there, is there any motion on that item? I make a motion to allow them to have the wooden shutters. Okay. Motion by Jamie. Is there a second? I'll second that. 15 seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so that, that item carries. And then we move on to the next item, which is to replace the rusted roof over the front porch. Uh, sir, we have found a fantastic product. We can actually save the steel roof. I don't know if you ever heard of Mule Hide. Um, they're about a hundred year old company and they have some of the best roofing components around. We found a product that will actually repair and save that tin roof. 
Okay, so if, if you're doing if that, that's that's like case, that, then you need to vote on that. If that's like the a, case, it's maintenance. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Oh. Okay. So item three then becomes like maintenance, and we don't yeah, have to vote on that. Well, it's just a spray on coating. <laughs> no, it's if that's it's if that's a, a case, it's a spray on coating. We've been coding. looking for down here. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Can we keep that one? Then we go on to the final item, which is to con. Okay, so item three becomes maintenance, so we're not going to vote. Item four, to convert the second uh, level rear entry door into a window. Is there any discussion or motion on that? Move to approve. We have a motion approved by Jan. Is there a second? Well, this is the I'll only second. one that I had a question with. Okay, go ahead. Just because it would change the function and the way the house looked. Because I couldn't tell from the pictures, was, but was it a double port? It walked down onto like a balcony, and then there was a stairway that went down into the backyard. Well, when we first bought the house, the stairway was completely rotten. We tore it down and just made it a closed off balcony. Because we, at the time, we had very small children, and we didn't want them falling through the stairs. Um, and then, like I said, over the years, it got waterlogged and dry rotted, and I. As a single mother, I just did not have the money to replace it, so we tore it off, and I would eventually like to replace the back porch, but right now I just don't have the money. So for safety reasons, I was going to fill in that back doorway and just make it a window that overlooked the backyard until I had the money and could rebuild the back porch. A question for your contractor. Can you frame it in so that it's reversible? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. If that, you that would be my only complaint. And save the door? Damage the frame. Oh, yeah, the door will be saved, yes. Door. I don't have a picture of this opening. I, hold on. I do have one on my phone. Well, it's all right. It's all right. I you so you can, you I can frame a window in and then you can just buy a door and put it in and lock it. Well, yeah, even even idea. with the door locked, it still has to have a bar across it. Right. If there's it not, cheap. yeah. So you're saying that you can buy a window, frame it in as best as the bottom half of it with this, cheaper than you just buy a door and bar. Yeah, I'd look. I, you know, I thought you could have just put your door in and barred it, and then you had your door open because the window's pretty expensive. And yeah, if you're planning on doing this, you know. The in the, in yeah. the foreseeable future, you know, mm -hmm. even if it's five years down the road, it might be easier just to leave that door there. Yeah, we won't deny it. That's well, the, the, yeah. the, the, that was the, well, that was the one thing the insurance company was concerned about because it swings out. Oh. And, they, and it, it's oh. a safety issue. Okay. So right now we've got a board nailed across it so no one can open it to go out. Yeah, I have to do that. But that's but, approved. But the insurance company will approve that bar. And that's just right. The, that it, okay. In the that's meantime, until I can afford to have it, the back porch rebuilt, I'd like it to look pretty. Right. And a board across the back door doesn't look pretty. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that, that's understandable then. Without any board, maybe I would have some wood. We had a motion approved by Jan, second by George. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Oh, Jamie, we have one opposed. Jamie. All right. So the. I just feel I'm just worried about. I think could we could you just paint that piece of wood down yeah. where the framing of the door is? Does the door have a window? The door's got a window in it. Could that yeah. piece of wood just go like right over where the handle would be, and you could paint it so you didn't notice it? That's I mean I'm just I don't know. We'd like to see. Well, I I would feel but a lot more comfortable not. if. The motion had said that it has to be reversible and the evidence of the original configuration is left there. So if you come back, the next person that buys it and wants to restore it to original condition, he has a blueprint there of what is needed to do it. Because they might not realize that it was even there. Yeah. You know that there was a porch there that could go down to the back. Should we, should we redo the motion? Oh, my yeah, so let, let's restate the motion. And, all right. You want Oh, so we can't we can't redo that? Well, no. Can vote to, no, we, we have to, to, to somebody can we make a, made yeah. the motion yeah. to I mean I don't know. Would you take that into consideration? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean I have yeah, I no just, I have no problems with keeping the door there and boarding over it or anything. I just I just don't want a door that opens up to nothing. 
Well, I just brought it up because you know I, I did this about two years ago at my home. It was cheaper to buy a door mm -hmm. and put the door, and I didn't want to put my deck on for years later. Mm -hmm. And the insurance had come out and said, "Well, well, well," and I cut a real decorative board and I barely skewed the back door, locked the door, the deadbolt. It sat there for two years and come along with my deck. Uh, if you look into it, you know, these guys tell me you can't buy a door cheaper. Than the time you, you frame it in and put like this it. by this side and side. I'm and sorry. Side. You, you might, you know. Mm -hmm. But I don't, we, we can't stop you, you know. Yeah. It's back of your home. It's, it's not okay, well, so t technically the motion carried, but with the suggestion that you make it in such a manner it could be retrofitted back into the grawl it. Yeah. An acknowledgement of and is evidenced by the meeting. So. We can make a blueprint if it's acceptable of the exact location of everything. No, it's fine. That'd be great. You, yeah. you can, right? Yes. Yeah. It's just that you would sell it. Mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. Oh, we're not going to force on. Whatever. No, it, it's not. The comments are not meant to stop progress at all. It's just to encourage and uh, enable restoration yes. of a future day. Right. Well, and, and eventually, like I said, I do want to put the back porch back on. I'd like to make it as easy as possible to do that. If that would make it easier, I'm going to Oh, yeah, you had your door already. Okay. Okay, well, great. So okay. Every, everything is done and you're set to go. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for Thank investing you. in town. Yes, it is. We were glad to find it. Thank you. Business. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're done with action items. Now we'll move on to old business. Uh, review of the window preservation and maintenance workshop with John Leak, which was held on June 20th to June 22nd. Yes. Before, yes. we, before we go on, are we going to review this uh, Lincoln House school room? And other business. Okay. This one. Um, oh, um, in front of you uh, is the information that Mr. Lee passed out during the workshop that was given to participants in the workshop um, packets. Um, except for the top two, which are the design guidelines and the design guideline checklist, which was a review that he gave to the commission. Um, George was your representative at the commission meeting that morning. So everybody give George a round of applause. Hey, I went to that. He gave uh, some very good uh, suggestions on how the commission can approach property owners um, who are thinking of replacing their windows and gave us some ideas on how to approach that. Um, I'll be typing up a report that we can go over in the, in the workshop. We did review um, a successful case that the commission had and um, an unsuccessful case. Um, I had trouble finding a successful case. Um, in, in was more successful in presenting a problem window cases that we had. Um, but an interesting one that we had was an application that came back four times, um, and each time he tweaked it just a little bit more, that was a little bit more appropriate. And, and uh, John said that that shows that he was learning along the way until the final application in which he did the appropriate thing. So that's a success. Um, I have some information on the table in front of you. He did a, a, a very extensive demonstration on lead paint safety, which Ed and Warren and Jimmy can attest to. It was very hot that day. Um, and if say nothing else about Mr. Leakey, he is extremely thorough about everything. Um, but if you are planning on doing this for a living, um, you should be aware of what these uh, requirements are. And if you're doing it on your own home, you should still be um, aware of what the dangers are in the public way to handle lead. Um, if you are um, working on, even your own home, if you're working on a tank that has lead in it, you should be posting this. And anybody working on a pre-1978 house doing any kind of renovation should have this posted on it and a caution tape for it. Mm. So if you don't see this, you know that something is wrong. How many of them signs you got? 
I can make copies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, this is the, and you might have seen this on Channel 798, they post this for me. Um, this is just a really quick synopsis of what the law requires on renovations. So, so what does the city require? Let's say a company's coming in and using a pressure washer on a historic building and blows all the leaded paint off into the street and uh, presumes to uh, paint it. And, and uh, who, who, who would step forward and say this is wrong? Is it the city's responsibility? You've got to get a hold of the EPA? Or? Well, the first thing uh, would be my responsibility to stop them from power washing because that is against our uh, design guidelines. Right, I know That's that. not the preservation of, of a building. Well, there's a house, um, there was a building Then I would down. request to see their certification, but it's not up to me to enforce that. I can report them, but it's not up to me to So report you report them to the EPA, or who do you I report can. them to? Or anybody well, can, actually. Anybody well, can call them and ask if somebody is certified. There was a house, I still have the pictures, that uh, I notified you that they were power washing a historical building, for one thing, and uh, they've, they've got supposedly let it paint all the way down the gutter, down the ditch in front of the post office. And I took pictures of that and I notified you. And uh, I was told that it's not up to the city, it's up to an individual to report to the EPA. So mm -hmm. is it still that way? I mean, is it? Yes, anybody can report them. And right. So you didn't, you <clears> didn't stop them. And that case was reported to the EPA. You didn't stop them from pressure washing. And that yep. case was reported, okay. It was, and it was followed up on by the EPA. Good deal. That's all I got. Um, okay. Let's see. Oh, the books, the uh, Save America's Windows books. Jamie, you want to hold on? Um, Mr. Lee um, gave one to, I believe each, of, yeah. each, each participant at the workshop received one. Uh, we received one for our office. The State Historic Preservation Office received one, and he donated one to the um, county library. Um, and then we have these four that are for sale for $20, which is a discount. They're usually 30 if anyone would like to purchase one. And I'm, I'm with that. Yeah, I'll, I'll with that one. And there's more for that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, in, the, in, in the material I gave you, um, let's see. The very bottom one. Spot maintenance. It says from the National Window Preservation Standards. Um, they are coming out with a new standard for the preservation of wood windows. And uh, Mr. Lee is just one of the authors of this. Uh, he is the editor uh, and he, he brought the uh, uh, draft of it to the workshop um, and the standards will show you how to do the process correctly for whatever you want to whatever needs to be done to the window whether it's painting or glazing or filling in um, the wood it shows you the appropriate way to do it and some um, time and money saving tips some very practical tips he likes to use things that are around him that you have in your home. He doesn't like to spend a lot of money. And this book will show you how to do that. And it's soon to come out. So I'm going to bring that. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, that completes the old business. Now we'll move on to citizen input. Are there any citizens who would like to address the commission? Before we go on, I'd just like to say that Mr. Leake's workshop was kind of awesome. I mean, I was there and it was very impressive the one I did too. Like, it was all that stuff opened. that I could do. I mean, some of the wind, like, we saved the best windows from our building, but I mean, some of them, I really, I mean, it would have just been a huge chunk. Like, the bottom rung, or the bottom of the top was just completely gone and all the glass was gone out of it. But I mean, other ones, like, he showed us how I could fix them and he made it not seem so daunting and yeah. and uh, it isn't that expensive but it is hard work and sweaty only <laughs> <laughs> that on the hot days of the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so i would suggest doing it in the winter <laughs> yeah. um, i almost forgot uh, ed and Lauren brought in before and after shutters um it was really cool there oh, is wow. a um, what kind of box do you call that? Steam box. It's the steam box. 
that is handmade and we've got directions on how to make one. It's very easy to make one at home to get the, um, the paint off of a window. Wow. And these are from their house. This is in the room, this is from the room that was actually trying to, this is tarred from the fire, the 807 mark. Is that the one you brought to the no, tarred? No problem. We just did that one at the house two days ago. This is the before and this is the after. Oh, wow. That's so, just like amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. Yeah. 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 These old wood, uh, old growth wood windows are more sustainable than people realize. Yeah. Um, the charring is really just on the surface. There's a lot of sturdy wood underneath to be safe. Well, and that's what I had asked. It. I mean, it's the old growth wood. It's you know, wood now would have burnt up probably. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you for bringing these in. Sure. Would you like to comment about how difficult it was to do this or anything? No, you don't like to talk on it. It wasn't that hard, really. Just took a little time. Um, Good job. The mayor. Was it uh, sweaty? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, it's pretty hot in our house in the afternoon. <laughs> it's hot everywhere. Uh, um, the mayor um, accepted the steam box for landmarks and for the city so that it can be checked checked out by any homeowner or anybody who would like to utilize it. And we would solely like to get a toolbox together that people can check out and use for them. Well, and I, I thought it was nice that the mayor attended every yes, every yeah. session as well. That's great. Yeah. Wow. Do we have the steam generator? Um, I think, well, no, we don't have one yet. Uh, Ed and Lauren have their own, but, but the city would have yours. What's the maximum, is, is there a maximum size that this will handle? It's yeah, mine did they, they can be a maximum size of, uh, of the, the windows. window. Um, you can adjust the box to the size of window you need. So any size is sash within reason. Yes. Yeah, you just have, mm -hmm. like I would have to make a different box. No. My window You might want to mention, if the steam box allows you to keep the whole window up evenly, if you didn't, you'd can you break the glass. Sorry. Part of the purpose of the steam box to is to mind. heat the whole sash soften up all the material and you can get your old pieces of glass out without breaking it. Yeah. If you just heat it up an edge of it, you crack the glass. Okay. All right, so and again thank you thank you for that input for the, the steam steam box. Yeah. Uh, all right, now we're moving on to other business. One item that's been put on the agenda for tonight is I think the Lions Club wanted some discussion or direction of a of a Bandstand in Lions Park. Is that correct? So you have uh, Sam and Jean come up, and or Sam or whoever, and we'll be happy to answer any questions or give you ideas. Well, the first question is: Do you guys have that? Did you pass out that thing that I turned in my last time for discussion? Because I just climbed out of tracks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyhow, the plan that we gave you is the first time Daddy's talking about here. We got a um, bid on that, and that thing was so cost prohibitive. There's no way that we could be we could build that. That covering on that and everything just put it so far over top. <clears throat> it can't happen. So I got another. Uh, design or another quote for a concrete pavilion. You know, zero maintenance, just 24 inches high, a nice little bevel around it, and a sanded finish so it would look like a stucco. Thought maybe that might be good. Well that too is over budget. Oh, yeah. Real bad. Yeah. So we're we're uh, we're here to talk about about uh, we're we're concerned about our budget, but we're concerned about being you know making you guys happy. So what we're thinking about is just a simple, just a womanized wooden deck, a platform. It's going up against a womanized fence and use womanized lumber, much the same as the one that's fancy, but just not made out of fancy material, just a simple wooden deck like you'd build in your backyard. And by standing to 24 inches, we're below code for handrails, and with them with three treads for the steps where we pass the, the handra handrail <coughs> requirement too. So it's just a thing sitting there we could actually landscape around that and make it blend into the park. <clears throat> yeah. this is, is this going to be permanent then? Well, it'll be wooden and it'll be yeah. both set in concrete. 
permit. Yeah, yeah. semi permanent. I mean, yeah. it's not like digging footings or something like that. You yeah. Know. There's something that we can stain, maintain, get, you know, 10, 15 years. By then, maybe our budget would afford something better. You know, and, and uh, the reason that, we, that we're sticking to this, excuse me, this 10 by 20 configuration is because that's the size of our canopies that we use. So we can just set a canopy over that, then take it down. We don't have to deal with, with the structure. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Then we yeah. Just, <clears throat> mm -hmm. anything that can be vandalized will be. Right. So you have to keep, keep that in mind, too. So, but that's what we were thinking. Like I said, what, what you guys think. Where would it be placed? I didn't see the... Uh, it's going in the park. If you're familiar with the park, the side next to Tim's fence, I guess mm -hmm. the Dame's fence now. Yeah. Uh, there's a gray conduit coming out of the ground there. And uh, it's almost in the center of the park, pretty much there. Did it, did it back up to the fence? Yeah, we wanted to back up to the yeah. fence. Yeah. And there is another reason we we're staying with 24 inches, because if we go much higher than that, there's a chance of somebody falling over that fence. Right. This way right. we have a good workable backdrop to that fence. Mm -hmm. So how far off the fence? Three, My four inches, close to the line there. Yeah. And the, 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 we we want to get a variance to the, from the property line to build so close to it? There's no need. No, no need? No need. From who? The we building code? Yeah. Yeah. My comments on the thing yeah. were. There's yeah. no need for a uh, variance for a property line from the Danes? For a permanent structure. I'd have to look at that. Yeah, there is. Yeah. I think the fence is set a foot off the property line, too. Well, yeah. see, okay. one person said that. But then Jim Dunsey, that built our building down there, uh, said to know that fence is on the property line. Okay. And I would imagine they probably know where it's at because setting that building in there, I'd say that would be. Mm -hmm. What we kind of thought about doing with this, instead of putting these posts right up against this fence, let's keep these posts out from that fence and then cantilever that deck back, you know, back to it. Mm -hmm. We want it close enough so nobody can step between it because then we would create a safety hazard. Right. Well, so I think you'll have a problem putting it on the property line. You know, I think it'll be a problem. You know, it'd be like you want to build a deck next to my neighbor's property. You know, I think it, it, you know you need to look into it a little bit more. Less well, well, right. problem with this Right. My problem with the thing is that it's a piecemeal thing. And Dick Bacon designed a beautiful little That's urban right. park there. It's a curb yeah. thing. I mean, the curb walks went around. You guys yeah. Now that you've made enlarged it, taken the fence out. Now, I grant, I know you can put the fence back in. You have permission to do that. But it doesn't look nearly as good now as, as it, it did, did before yeah. you started. It's not in balance. The whole thing, it, by taking a good architect's work, and throwing a building in here and a piece here and a piece there, you've unbalanced the whole thing. And it, it's not an asset as it sets now. And I, I am not against making the improvements you're suggesting. I'm just saying get somebody that can look at it from an overall standpoint. I know you have the problems of how do we operate it. I mean, it's gotta be, it's gotta be such that it can be operated. But it also shouldn't destroy the ambiance of what you had there. You had a beautiful little urban park. That was approved. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're hoping that with the correct landscaping, we can make this blend in. Can you all get somebody to help you? To help us uh, in design or landscape design? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, somebody that's familiar with landscape design. Maybe bacon, I don't know. Well, he, he designed the original thing. You hate to put landscape up to high bad, bad architecture. The Dames and, and Tim Connolly and the State House are down there go through a lot of trouble. You know, the new fence they just put up to use rough cut lumber, planking like that. So if you can kind of try to make it even, fake hand do the logs to make them look, you know, the posts to make them look. You know, if you could just try to go that, maybe the band board, you know, how you build a deck and you use cedar, but you use womanized, but you'll cover that womanized up with just a, a one by cedar board. You know, there's, I, I see nothing wrong with you putting a deck there. I don't, I hate to see it against the property line. A, a deck's a deck, I know you need it, it's a good cause, but we gotta try to fit the area here in the heart of the historical district 
and womanize and what type of lattice were you going to use on that well, first drawing? Well, on this lattice issue, land. no, actually, but just if you think <laughs> about design, it's only 24 inches from the ground. Yeah. It's going to have a 2 by 10 this way and yeah. a 2 by you 8 that way, need. so it's on the ground. Yeah, you don't even need the lattice. On the grass mm -hmm. gets up 4 inches high, so you don't, you don't need, need that. Right. Mm -hmm. But what I was talking about, you know, if you look at the porches of all the homes around there and design it a little bit like that. You know, we've talked about the western cedar on it versus the womanized. That's one thing. Here also, we, we were looking at, I've got quotes from Canada on, uh, on the womanized. The next step would be western cedar, which is very high. And the next step, composite. Yeah, and that's not, either of those three is probably we can stay in budget with that. You know, it's just whichever maintenance. Well, that's again another reason we're here. If Western Cedar would be preferred, it can be done with Western Cedar. Can you first establish if it is a permanent or a non-permanent structure? Because a non-permanent structure makes a big difference. It's not being taken down after the use. Well, it's being set in concrete. So yeah. One, what do you mean by definition here? Do you mean something that would be set up for a specific event? Or do you mean something that could be torn down in five years? The latter. Yeah. yeah. Well, that leaves, to part of that if it's, if it's ill-designed in the first place, that leaves five years of It's permanent. And I saw it. I mean, you're going to build it to last. But We're going to build as, as long as the material will last. Right, so it's permanent. And it's not going to last five houses. years. A house is, is permanent until it rots, he's saying. So you got to consider it permanent. They're not taking it down after they use it. It's going to stay in. Well, but a pool, an above ground pool, do you consider that a permanent? No, no. the life expectancy of a pool. But it's not set in concrete. It has to do whether it's affixed to the ground. Yeah, it's not set in concrete. You know. But it also, in the context of the ground, you know, not on a foundation. Yeah, an in ground pool is permanent. But the, the context for our purposes is can it be removed? Not will it be removed? No, I don't think so. Yeah, a house can be removed. A garage can be removed. No. Yeah, it's because it. you have foundation on. No, it, it can be removed. Mm. It's set in concrete. This has a foundation. I, I, does it? Does would it matter to you if it what was permanent or not? It doesn't well, to think, me. I, personally, I think it goes by if it's permanent or not permanent. It goes by what their guidelines are, what your limitations are, right. as in to restricting them on what they can do. I think it's the same guidelines either way. I mean. Could you build this without using the concrete? Could you have it where it sits on the ground? It'll be, uh, with what we want to do will be piers. The piers will be probably six inches above ground with post, and then you've got your 10 by uh, 10 inch joists, mm -hmm. two by, and we'll build like a, a small deck you would have on any house. And it'll be 24 inches tall. This table's 30 inches. And once we get the, uh, it landscaped around, our wrought iron fence finished, most people walk by and don't even know it's there. My pergolo on my house is considered, it is not a permanent structure. Oh. And it is concreted into, into the, the pad there. It is not considered a permanent structure. If I took the structure then per se, we're gonna have, there'll be three tiers down through this to, for it to set on. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, if I slash the post idea, which is a lot of work anyway, yeah. we'll level up three beams and build on them three beams, we don't have a problem. I mean, yeah, I think that's true. I mean, you, I you, change, you, you change into a different set of guidelines when you do it that way. Yeah. And much less risky. And that would be cheaper than digging a hole and buying a concrete. Right. And it would be something that you could pick up and move. You have stoopies once you pull the concrete and pull stuff, it's gone. Yeah. I mean, there's no yeah. land discrust or nothing. But does that make it deteriorate? No, there's ground, ground contact lumber. Yeah. It's, we're, what we're trying to do is build a multi-use uh, facility as cheap as we can, but right. looks as good as it can in St. Right. Well, and I mean, the, the structure that you built for the food is, I feel like, blends really well, and this is a community place. I mean, mm -hmm. we did this for the right, for the Knights of Columbus. I mean, I feel like mm -hmm. they and, should be able and to. And I think that it, that adds a really nice feature to, to the Lions Club that for events you can have performances on on a stage. And, and it gets that off the ground. So yeah, right. which is so much that. better for sight lines if you're trying to watch something. Well, and there's one more aspect. Yeah. It's my understanding that 
you have to do this bit to put the final piece of metal fencing to enclose so you don't back the trailer in. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, especially last year at the Christmas uh, walk parade, we had the uh, our float in the parade, and then we had to back it into the park mm -hmm. uh, with the sled and everything so kids could get pictures. And we had to literally, there was people guiding us in and hushering oh. people away. This time, uh, we can have everything set up on the uh, what we're proposing, and you walk in, it's there. And uh, we had a major safety issue last year. Yeah. You have had for a number of years with that. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, a two-foot platform with the correct steps, the children can walk up, do their pictures, mm -hmm. and walk back off. Um, it's just a multi-use. Uh, we can do. We uh, anyway. I guess our uh, our main thing is it's going to be done correct. It's not an eyesore. Right. I d I don't have a problem with this because I think it is is an addition to the park that makes it so useful for events and that the Lions Club always come through with entertainment there. Oh, yeah, and uh, I, I just think it's a, a nice thing. And yeah. uh, that's one of our goals to get that fin uh, fence finished, but we've been slacking on it because we want to get the bandstand finished so we don't have to worry about trailers. During the bet, uh, we've got to move trailer in. Yeah, and that's, that's a trick, I usually back that in. Yeah. yeah. But I'd once we get through the tail everything line. in place, mm -hmm. uh, then we can put the fence in properly, and uh, it'll it'll be a an enclosed park. Yeah, I don't think it matters to us if it's permanent or not. I'd like to see it concrete in just because of construction eyes. But if you don't want to, maybe insurance wise, it has to be anchored to the ground and pick up platform. All I'm asking is we get a plan that shows maybe on two sides you could use a rough cut board to make it look like the 1800s, like they could build down that area. Uh, you're right next to uh, Tim Connolly's home, which is a lot. The old Duke's house is right there. And uh, we go through a lot of research before we build something. So, you know, just vinyl, vinyl lattice and womanized wood, uh, you know. So maybe, you know, all I ask is... So that's, that. that's why we came down here. Right. Before that, we and start and I think that's the only question yeah. I have. That way, that way yeah. the materials. The but we can, is a good we can idea. blend it in to, to make the, the, yeah. the background. Yeah, what the two sides really just show. So right. if you could just use, you know, that more, that ten by womanized green board. You know, everybody knows, and, and they just like to see. And the lattice, I'd personally like to see it not on there at all. Well, what would you cover? That's what I said. Not enough to get the saw. When I hear a vinyl lattice, I was like, Whoop. you can come through and landscape. Yeah, hide it. Just time you, you put your. Need it by. Well, do you have developed a, yeah. a plan now that could be reviewed? I could have one by the by the weekend. Oh, I need time. I can't. I can't draw and drive. <laughs> no, all, all I'm suggesting yeah. is that maybe we did come to a better decision if we had a concrete from post. Well, we're not. This isn't an action item. We're not voting on this. Yeah, we're just this yeah. is information. We've got some time. Yeah, and we've got some time. And we've all seen the plans. The size is fine. I think you're gonna have trouble with the property line building it, but uh, all I'm worried about the aesthetics of it, and, it, and that's just plank boards, you know, for the deck. Bands being on it, they gotta be tight. Uh, we've used cypress tongue and groove, you know, that fits, you can use fur tongue and groove, and then just that band board going around, and you're off, you know. Uh, also, Tim, Tim Collins was raising his hand back there. Yes, uh, I, I um, oppose this from the standpoint that they, they attached to that fence. That fence was built to, uh, with the nice side out, and it was uh, a lot of effort went into it. And, uh, I have an interest in right. the property that goes. But to, but to you're not April attaching. No, we're year. gonna no. stay. We're gonna be close, but close enough to snow. I can step it free. Yeah, you. there'll be an airspace. Yeah, I, mean, but I, I, I think there there's should be a foot. So one foot distance. And we would have to install a back rail. Oh, really? Which that's the only. Well, you got musicians, yeah, drummers, or whatever, who can roll back in the chair and fall off the back of us. Then we would have to figure it. There's a lot of kids. A back rail. A lot of kids playing that part. You know, you have a lot of people. So I said there again, Bob, we were wanting to use to narrow that to keep from having to do a back rail. A back rail yeah. is not out of the question. But then we're going to have to deal with the static slow we're going to use. 
on a wrought iron, then there's a the well, you just got to yeah. be a certain mesh size so you limit it on what you can do with the rail there. Yeah. So I guess look about that. See if you can get up against that fence. And uh, I'd just like to see a drawing of materials you're going to use. And as far as doing it, I'm okay, the size and everything. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see it stuck in the ground and concrete and got paint and the freeze What do you mean by concrete? Put the posts in concrete below the frost line so it don't raise and lift the well, freezing. The piers are going to be below the frost line. Well, that's fine. Yeah. 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 But then, you know, we got to have the wood above right. the air gap to keep from rotting through. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You, you know, I take, you know, there's a lot of ways to do it. Dig a hole, put your womanized 4x4 four four in it, throw concrete in it instead of trying to pack dirt. But your frost line's what, 30 inches? Yeah. So, that's not a bitch. No, that, no, it's. But it's. You know, we're going to have those uh, solid tubes. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, I don't even use them, but that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I just like to see the band board look rough cut like the state just did that fence. You know, you've seen that rough cut cedar. We're building a red oven back there, and we're using red rough cut cedar for the roof. And uh, I, can't, I don't want to hand hewn logs, so we're going to do the fake marks on them. Just keep everything, you know, looking. But now that I'm talking about it, the fence you're backing up against is womanized, isn't it? No, that's it, no, 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 no. Is that it, womanized? It's, it's uh, that's grade A lumber. It, it, it's not okay. rough. It, right, but it, it is a womanized wood. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. You're, you're building like it. it's womanized. Yeah. Maybe that yeah. turns that out of order. Wanted to blend it. That's yeah. what I said. Wanted to match the fence. Yes, I think Frank yeah. has something. Yes, yeah, so I'd like to make a motion that we call a special meeting and review your plans and in the meantime come up with a plan mm -hmm. the, the, where your fence is going in where the bandstands are going in how it's going to be built where you're going to put the uh, landscaping and the like so that we have something ready to work on we could sit here all night you know, back and forth on little mm -hmm. points and never reach a well, agreement yeah. i don't think anybody's opposed to it it's right. just the, uh, the, what is See, the exactly. end product going yeah. to look like yeah, just looks. because it is a very significant part of the town and it has been a very successful part of the town mm -hmm. in the past it's a, it's a beautiful little park that's been well used and that's i would like to see the plan give it a good fair hearing and uh are you, you trying to get to do it so we don't delay that, them I, I mean i think we would all be happy to accommodate that by having a special meeting as yeah, soon as you Got the plans already. I mean, the size hasn't changed, has it? Yeah, just the materials. Just the materials. Yeah, whenever you're ready, we can just hold a special meeting here. Yeah. Come up. It's almost, almost, almost past happening for Dirty Fat now. Oh. Yeah, it, uh, we don't want to tell the party. We'll probably yeah. regroup after Dirty Fat. Okay, all okay. right, that's fine. No, right, it's too close now. We're okay. Within three weeks. You know. yeah. So. Okay. No, we, uh, we're going to make it right. We know you well. Yeah. Love yeah. the park. Yeah. I love everything you do. So. Yeah. The sign's beautiful. Wow. But uh, we're, our our next step is once the bandstand's finished, we want to get the fence finished, yeah. mm -hmm. and then the park will be a park. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, it's like a missing tooth down there right now. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to make the fence so that it can be open we'll wide enough for a truck? Yeah. We'll have a gate. Good. Yeah. Good. But we don't want to have this. Backing in trailers and buying and buy all this. So. Yeah, understand. Yeah. Yeah. Those trailers that we use, like a Jerry Fett, those are construction trailers and they're heavy. If you have any rain, then you've got a set of ruts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. they usually don't become available until Friday afternoon, you know, to get them from the contractors. So we're, you know, we're not, don't really not sure we have a bandstand for our event until the day of the event. That's, 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 that's kind of touch and go close, sometimes, yeah. you know. Now, when you guys got permission to build that one building, was it on there to tear, to remove the other one, or is that other building going to stay there? Well, it's going to stay, stay there. Okay. That was discussed. The original building, I guess. Yes. Right. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I thought it was supposed to be removed. We've got uh, future plans for it. Uh, possibly, you know, for as Jared Effect grows, we may be using it for um, some outdoor activities. So. Okay, well, we appreciate you guys coming yeah, in and you. appreciate everything you're doing. And yeah. whenever you're ready, we have yeah, a special we'll meeting, if not a uh, regular meeting. That's great now. But our goal right now is to get prepared for Jerry Pat. So. Sure. Yeah. All right, thanks, thanks for coming by. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
Uh, next on old business is the. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, we're on oh, other business. Uh, next on other business is uh, the Lincoln Elementary School roof project. Um, there were some questions about the process for approval of that, so I wrote up a synopsis. Uh, would you like me to read through this, or mm -hmm. you just want to review it? So I can read it. I can read it. Okay. Um, on June 26th uh, this year, the applicant uh, requested an occupancy inspection uh, from our building inspector, and an appointment was set for July 1st. Uh, the building inspector then informed me of this request and questioned uh, how this could be done if we did not know the use of the building, which we have to know what the building use is going to be before we do an occupancy for a uh, building code. On July 27th, then, I discussed this appointment with our customer service um, person and advised them to hold off the inspection that had been scheduled until I had time to talk with the applicant about the occupancy. Um, that afternoon, I spoke with the applicant and discovered that an occupancy really wasn't what he wanted. What he needed was a new roof, um, which at that time we um, Cancel the occupancy. Is this last year? Or this, yeah, year this year. July 27th. July instead of June. Yeah, that's a big problem. Oh, okay. I'm yeah, sorry. July 27th. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so it was the next day after. Yes, the oh, next okay. day. The next day. We can just correct that all the way down there. Um, up to July 1st. Well, just a minute. Um, on July 28th. Seventh, I asked for information on the roof replacement when I talked to the applicant and advised him that this would have to go before landmarks for clearance since it was a total roof replacement. Then on Friday the 28th, I received the information back from him on his choices of building materials um, and information on the contractor he was going to use. Uh, the following Monday, July 1st, we're back on track, uh, the applicant himself came into the office to talk with me about the project and stated that he would rather use the wood cedar shakes and asked if he could do something about the decking while he waited uh, for a response from the commission. I advised him that since the decking had water damage and was rotten out, uh, that a new decking, roof decking, would be required. And since the existing shingles would have to be removed in order to do this, I gave him permission <coughs> to remove the shingles and place new roof decking on the building. Um, he also advised me that his contractor had fallen through the roof when he got up there to do an inspection, adding to another hole in the roof. Um, then on July 1st, uh, later that morning, I forwarded the email to the Landmarks Commission explaining the situation and asked if a meeting was warranted for this. And I received four responses from commissioners. The applicant, uh, like so many others, had put the horse in front of the court cart and hired a contractor prior to his request for the permit. He had also ordered materials on that Monday morning. The building inspector visited the site after this and discussed the proposed roofing project with the contractor and discussed the appropriate methods of installation. Um, that was our main concern, was not just the materials, but how they were going to be installed. We wanted to make sure that the contractor knew what he was doing. After discussing the appropriate method of application for cedar shingles, I made an administrative decision to go ahead and issue the building permit application based on the following facts. The building materials and the application method were appropriate to the project. Uh, I personally, oh, I'm just going to bring in a sample, found remnants of the original cedar shake roof on the premises from the recent removal of the roofing materials. So it was an original cedar shake roof on the building. Due to the re required 24-hour notice of a meeting and the upcoming 4th of July holiday, a special meeting of the commission could not have been arranged until the following week. The contractor and materials had already been secured. The weather forecast called for periods of rain and thunderstorms. And my priority was to make sure that this historic building could remain as dry and weatherproof as possible and that no further harm would come to it. Um, the following day, the building inspector and I made a site visit during the construction to make sure that the uh, proper installation method was being utilized, and it was. And I also took photographs of the way the installation was being conducted. And so I have uh, provided you before and after pictures. Any questions? 
Is the sheeting solid or? I'm sorry? Is the seed sheeting solid or is it uh, strips? It's solid. Solid? Okay. Yes. Was there tar paper you used? No, tar paper, it was sheeting. When they put the sheeting down, did they put tar paper over the sheeting? Yeah. Well, I know they did, but I thought you said somebody said they did. And this drawing, which one did they use here? Um, the top one is what's what's attached to their building permit. This is this is the method they use, which is this the, is it here. Mm -hmm. the one on the front. Then, do not. Yeah. Which is the option one. The old roofs and the longer lasting roofs were slotted. Mm -hmm. But Scripts. this is the recommendation no. from the. Um, um, yeah, the association. The association. I, yes. I've dealt with them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sometimes they're right, but you can argue all night about well, whether. Well, since they made their shakes. Yeah. yeah. So what is it going to be used for? Yeah. So it's going he to be. He still does not know. Uh, the inspection is pending until we know what the use of the building is going to be. He is now working on um, replacement guttering. He would like to put copper guttering on there, but he has to figure out how to it. Has to figure out what? How to attach it. Okay. Well, that's no big problem. Copper nails. Hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, if, if, if no, you can't figure that out, yeah, no, that's a problem. problem. <laughs> well, uh, he has more of a little more of an overhang than that was there before, because um, it was a problem trying to put guttering on that problem on the roof before he um, changed the roofing. Off set offs from yeah. the fashion. D. Mm -hmm. um, but you have solid sheeting, and then you've got felt, I got those strips in the felt and then the wooden anything. shingles directly on that. Yeah. No ventilation underneath. Mm -hmm. okay. He didn't use the strips, did he? What do you mean, the strips of wood? He took sheeting, mm -hmm. like Frank said. Yeah. Yeah. Got the sheeting, put, and then he had the felt that put goes felt under down, each one. Then nailed to it. Mm -hmm. he, he, he said That's strips, and they're wondering if you use sheets of No, no sheeting, well, sheeting strips or strips. There's, there's, You've got your um, sheathing that lays down on the deck, mm -hmm. and then you have the felt that goes between the layers. But between oh, that, you have the strips of wood. Okay, so that's the yeah. ventilation. Well, it's an argument that's gone on for right. uh, probably under two years. I mean, the older roofs were put down with probably one by four roofs with ventilation underneath, and they lasted. Mm -hmm. Now, the contractors don't like them because it's a lot easier than up there with a nail gun and a sheet of plywood and put that down mm -hmm. but and then put a, a sheet of uh, a spit of uh, tar paper down and put your shingle directly to it looks good doesn't last nearly as long but it looks good and uh, but that's the way most of the contractors are doing it now that's what's recommended by the association well then that's made up of the contractors yeah and the manufacturer. I think what, what Frank's talking about is they make a product that stands the shingles off the sheathing by about a quarter of an inch. It's just yeah. a mesh of continuous ventilation yeah. product yeah. that shows so it here. Draft you get yeah. some ventilation yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Because the shingles the shingles rot out from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I don't think the roof was installed in any like any of these drawings here. I it think was. they put the sheeting down, put the tar paper down, and then stapled the shingles to it. Is that what you're saying they did? Is that right? To the roof, yeah. Well, you're supposed to interlay each the, piece. The felt, yeah. Who was the contractor? Well, they put it down. They put the felt down and then shot the staples to the felt. No, I they, they them. put that. Well, we watched them, too. Okay, where I see them did, they didn't. Because I was standing in the rain there looking at it. I and I thought, ooh, well, I can't, okay. But I know one area of the roof they didn't. Who was the contractor? Can you tell us? I believe it was CBT. There's some good workers, though. So. From I jumped Illinois. Up there and got it done. From where? Illinois. From uh, okay. outside Chicago. Yeah. Chicago. They're hard to find. They did a good job. I mean, they got up there and got it done, man. Dangerous situation. With July and everything. CBT. Can't be done. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great looking roof, I'll tell you that. So. I just feel yeah. bad we weren't involved. That was a pretty important thing. I'm not saying that it, anything went wrong, thank God. Well, I yeah. I attempted to get to you guys. Right, and you said four people did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gets up, and you inspected it while it was going up. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 oh, and I think it's. I, I don't like that 
type of installation, but if it's up, and it was inspected right. going up. And better than much. letting it yeah. open to the weather when we've had such bad storms, yeah, that would be. We don't have much choice. Yeah. Somehow there was, he was, he was laying uh, shorter rows of, of uh, oh. ice, and, ice and water to good, good felt, and, and then every third row, it would get tucked, the top neck, the third shingle would get tucked underneath. Okay, that. so it had some it had room for it to move. So moisture. Yes. It's got yeah, it's got more layers of tar paper as he went up. Yeah. So they did slide it under the staple, yeah. slide it. So yeah. yeah, like you're supposed to. Yeah. When I was there watching them, it might I didn't pay attention what row it was, but the neck they, I could see where they nailed that shingle and then they put the other shingle on top. Well, he did, right. The third one he just slid under the third the okay. tar paper because he okay. he had staggers of the tar paper running down there. It looked like it was about eighteen inches and okay. And they, they I know they, they knew what they were doing. I was oh, yeah. I was trying to learn as fast as they were going. Is there any uh, any other other business? Yes, just one more thing. Um, uh, just a little thing. I created a note um, card for the commission. Oh, great. Good. So um, this be like if we typed a message inside. This is supposed to be there. It's supposed to be back there. Just so to that's kind of stop work orders. And I did use those as thank you notes yeah. for the Great. Yeah. I will just tell our good. artist, she just moved to Texas. Her family just moved to Texas, but oh. she got second place in state for the patriotic designs for the VFW. Oh, good. 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 Really. Nice. Okay. Any other, other business? Two other businesses? I have no other business. Okay, there. A motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, George. Any seconds? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Meeting is adjourned.